And trust matters in three ways, primarily, for us as part of the military profession. First is the American people. Uh, none of us should ever forget uh, that we wear a United States Army or United States Air Force or United States Marine Corps or United States Navy or United States Coast Guard uh, on our uh, uniforms. We are the people's army and we always have been the people's army. We come from the people and we defend the people. That's our purpose. That's the only reason we exist. There is no other reason. America's army is a people's army. And we have to maintain the trust of the American people. Right now, you have it. Right now, we have it. Right now, the institution of the military has it. But trust is a fragile thing. And every time that someone breaks trust, you're chipping away at the trust, the bond, the cohesion between the people and the people's army. So trust is fundamental. And it's an incredibly powerful bond, but it's a fragile bond as well in that it can be broken apart with individual acts or institutional acts of lack of character, of incompetence, of failure to be honest and showing integrity. There's no bastards up at squad attitude that's appropriate for us as senior leaders of the United States Army. It doesn't work. You don't want it done to you. You wouldn't want your subordinates to say, well, you know, General so-and-so is a real jerk or whatever, you know, he's an idiot, humma, 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 humma. You don't want to be undermined. You don't want your power or authority uh, undermined. You expect loyalty and you expect professionalism. And if you have a problem with your boss, the professional thing to do is walk into your boss and say it. It's called having guts, spine, integrity, having moral courage, speaking truth to power. What's unprofessional is to snipe at the sidelines, to undermine, to go to the water cooler, to do all of those things. That's unprofessional. So it's very, very important that we have trust and confidence looking upwards as well. And where you have issues, then you address them and you address them in a professional way. It's also important that you have trust and confidence in, with our units on our left and right, with your teammates. This army of ours, this military of ours, is not an individual activity. This is a group activity. The conduct of war is a group activity. And it requires teamwork, not just left and right inside the Army, but left and right inside the Joint Force, left and right inside the interagency of the United States government, left and right inside the multinational or allied forces. But trust is the bedrock of that. You have to be able to trust the person on your left and right. What breaks down trust is what I would call destructive competitiveness. You've all seen it. It's Courtney Massengale. It's the guy who stabs you in the back in order to advance himself. Sometimes it's done in very subtle, snide, snipey ways. You've all been in rooms like that. Sometimes it's done in very open, gross, disgusting ways. But either way, whatever the technique, the tactic of the guy's sniping, it's wrong. And it breaks down trust. So if you are like that, cease fire. And if you see people around you like that, crush them. But don't put up with it. Don't put up with the Courtney Massengills. You and I all learned about it when we were lieutenants and captains. Just don't put up with it. Eliminate them, purge them from the system. We don't need them because they break down trust, the very bedrock of our profession. And then you have to have trust looking downward. Don't be that general, don't be that officer who's always looking upward and outward and looking for your next job. 
take care of those soldiers and civilians and those family members that you're in charge of and take it to heart. Remember those 2,406 people killed, those soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines killed at Pearl Harbor and love them and their families. Remember the soldiers that died underneath your command in combat. You've all had them. Remember the soldier that Secretary Fanning was with yesterday at Walter Reed Army Memorial Hospital when he died. And love them as if they are your own family. Love your soldiers. And if that fire in the pit of your stomach isn't burning every day when you get up, that you love being a soldier, that soldiering is a way of life, it's not a job, it's a way of life, it's a calling, it's a profession. If that fire in the pit of your stomach is not there, then do us all a favor, go see the vice, make an appointment with the vice, and activate the letter that you all sign and says, I'm out. But don't break the trust that you have with those soldiers. They are looking to every one of us for leadership. Their very lives and their limbs are depending on it. They're looking to you for that leadership, that trust. So trust really is, it's not just words in a, doc, in a manual that Lundy and Perkins are putting out at TRADOC. That's not what it's about. It's real. It has real consequences. Character and trust matter. It's not just happy talk. So trust up, down, left and right. His trust matters most in the very core of the CORE task for which we exist, which is fighting. The, our purpose in order to defend the Constitution, to defend the American people, is to kill people Kill people who threaten our people. Kill people who threaten that Constitution. Our purpose is to close with and destroy the enemies of our country. And for that, it requires trust. And oh, by the way, if you go into the future, it's true in the present, but in the future, it's even going to be more accentuated. We are going to operate in a very compartmented, distributed battlefield. Of that, I have no doubt. All these communications and uh, all this uh, network stuff may or may not work, and I would bet on the not work, given the fact that the enemy's capabilities in terms of their electromagnetic capabilities, in terms of shutting things down, cyber, and so on and so forth, the probability of us having pushed to talk commo is not high. It's just not high against a near-peer competitor. We can do it all day long against the Taliban and al Nusra Front and Al-Qaeda and all that kind of stuff. We can have you know, a free ride you know, in the air, in space, satellites, and we can have Kamo all day long doing that stuff. We're just not contested. You go against the Russians, the North Koreans, the Iranians, the Chinese, that's a different ball game. That is a different ball game. And if that ends up being the case, and I don't know if it will or not, it's not predictive, but if it does, you can take it to the bank that you're not going to get directions right from the West Wing of the White House or the Pentagon. You might not even get directions from your next higher headquarters. So what kicks in? How do you still achieve success? You achieve it through trust. You achieve it through mission command and intent-based tactics, understanding the purpose of the higher headquarters operational design, understanding why you're doing the task not just to do the task. Don't just go left, right or left, right or left. Understand why you're going left, right or left. And then achieve the purpose. Answer why first. And achieve the purpose in the absence of orders. That's the very essence of mission command. And it's all built upon that single word that's in the doctrine, that's in the, in the doctrine of the profession, the bedrock of the ethic, which is trust. I trust that you will achieve the purpose and you will do it ethically and morally and legally correct, which takes an immense, an off-the-charts level of character 
You have to have a spine of titanium steel to withstand some of the pressures of intense ground combat, and you've got to always do the right thing when no one is looking. When there are no rules, when there is no training schedule, there are no lawyers, you're in the midst of a swirling battle, and it's intense, and it's brutal, and they just killed your best friend, and you just captured the guy. Do you put a gun in his mouth and blow his brains out, i.e. murder? Or do you treat him in accordance with the laws of war? You have to do the right thing, and no one's watching. Nobody's watching. You got to do the right thing when no one's watching. And that trust is imperative, especially in combat. 